Yeah, good morning. This is Bang Bang Rail. Um, just come back from a little walk. Uh, I don't even notice my eye. Uh, on this side is uh, is uh, booze and all that. Yeah, but it, it, yesterday I was taking the uh, ball boys out for walks. Took the first one out the dog, um, and uh, I went down to stro stroke it, and it come back with a come back with his head, man, and then knocked me spark out. I swear. <laughs> Knock me on the floor, come back with his head, man. Knock me, nearly knock me out, mate. Yeah, and uh, there's a, I've got a great, great big booze there now. Anyway, yeah, um, I got a comment yesterday uh, from uh, uh, um, a relation of Jimmy Wilkinson's and just wanted me to talk more about Jimmy and the market and bits and pieces. Well, I've known Jimmy um, a long, long time. Um, I come from Acton. Jimmy Wilkinson comes from uh, Ealing. West Ealing, and uh, he's a notorious, uh, uh, he was a notorious gangster. A very, very powerful, dangerous man. Um, I met him, met him really um, in the clubs, yeah? When I was to go to the clubs, um, I met him in, 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 in Harrow, in Mickey Green's club in, in, in Harrow, and uh, he, he was a, sort of like a, a, a very powerful man. Another club, another club at um, Skyline uh, called Bobo's, uh, people must remember that club in Bobo, Bobo's Skyline at London Airport. Big club there, I met Jimmy there. Met him there with uh, Dave Delaney and a few other people. Uh, I think Brian Reynolds was there, I'm not quite sure. And uh, Mickey Green, and they was all there, yeah. And I didn't really, really know him as uh, as uh, bank robbers, uh, but I knew uh, Jimmy was a bad, bad man, yeah. I met, well, and then I worked down the fruit market in the 60s, 60, 69, 68, 69, around them areas, you know, when I come out with Ballstall, and um, I used to work with some big companies down there, big firms down there, you know, and uh, a, a one, one particular firm I used to work for is Northsides, and uh, a guy that worked there was Colin Cracknell. Colin Cracknell was one of the hardest men in the market, could have a white fight, a good boxer, mate, but he could have a fight as well, he, he weren't fighting no one, he was always fighting, and I liked being with him because I learned a lot from, from him. I was to walk big, all flash, uh, with the market gear on, the bib, the bib, and the hat, the flat cap, and all that. That's why I was wearing a cap, I suppose. Now, a flat cap, and you know, and, and, and go to the and go to the calves, walking down a road, or jet the lead. I was only a kid, I was a boy, and but um, I was learning to fight because I was to fight with uh, Colin all the time around the market, and uh, you know, as a young kid, it's a good thing to do. You know what I mean? Anyway, I uh, met, met Jimmy uh, in, in a place called Alsteads. Alsteads in the market is a, is a big coffee shop that all the greengrocers used to go in there. And listen, mate, Jimmy, Jimmy's dad, I think, I forget his name, Joker Wilkinson. Um, I'm not quite sure. Big man with glasses. Big, powerful man. Yeah, big, powerful man. He used to be in, the, used to be in there with Johnny Williams. Johnny Williams used to run a greengrocer shop in the, in, in the halfway house. Halfway, halfway house at uh, uh, Hamwell uh, pub, and um, you know Jim uh, uh, Johnny was a, a big man. Johnny Wilkinson, uh, the old man, the old man uh, was a oh, he was a big powerful Joker Wilkinson was a big powerful man, and a couple of times I went in there, and uh, Jimmy was there, very very respectable, respected man. You looked at him, mate, and he was like, you know, he was a right old man. You know what I mean? He like looked at him, and you thought, fuck, you know. You know, and he and, and he looks at you in a funny way. We look back at him, mate. He was a little bit of trouble. It was only that like, was a kid. You know what I mean? And he was a man. He was, I think he's a little bit older than me, maybe four or five years older than me, but a powerful, dangerous man. And um, you should see him walk around the market, shouting and screaming at people. Always shouting and screaming at people. Had a had a way about him, a way about him that was a bit over the top. You know what I mean? And um, one day. Um, he comes to all sides. Uh, him and Cracknell was always loggerheads, always shouting at each other. But you imagine, imagine when Cracknell was one of the governors of the market, he ain't having all that shit. And I worked uh, at all sides as well as a kid. And uh, one day it, it went off, it kicked off. It kicked off between Jimmy and, uh, and Colin Cracknell. And uh, Colin Cracknell bashed him up, you know what I mean? He did bash Jimmy up, you know what I mean? He, I mean, he, Jimmy kind of his hands up as such. He can't have a fight. But uh, Colin Crack was a different, different uh, class altogether. It's like an amateur fighter and a professional fighter. You know what I mean? And uh, that, that's the difference there. Yeah? And uh, Colin bashed him up. But um, about what four or five weeks later, Jimmy come back and uh, jumped off the back of a motor. 
a lorry and a bit off uh, uh, cracked his ear off and, 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 and then steamed into him uh, and, and then kicked him all around the gaff and this, that and the other and, and it was even Stevens. But them two was having long reds 24-7 in the market. Jimmy didn't come back in the market too too often then. And if he did, he stayed well away from Cracknell. And Cracknell stayed well away from Wilkinson. And, uh, and you know, as, as I say, I should go down the club in Harrow, Mickey Green's club in Harrow. Uh, when I was, you know, I was only a boy. But I should go to all these clubs and, and Skyline, Bobos. You know, they were the clubs to go to. And I was to go there. I was a kid, you know, but I was to go there. And... Uh, and then um, I met a guy uh, in Albany, bounce on a bit. But I met a guy in in, in Albany, uh, a guy called Dave Delaney. Uh, Dave Delaney was involved with the Wembley Wembley Bank robbers, and uh, and and he was uh, grasped up by Bertie Smalls. Well, Bertie Smalls I've met quite a few times. He was also in a, in a, in the Harrow Club with Mickey Green and Wilkinson and that little fine Brian Turner. I think Brian, yeah, Brian Turner and a few other people was in there. And uh, when I think it was about 72, 73, maybe, maybe that time, 72, 73, late, later dates, I was in uh, Brixton. I was in the uh, DCAT in, well, not the, I forget, the, what was it, security, security wing in Brixton. You know, everybody had everything in there. The screws left, left them alone. They could drink, do what they like, and oh, they put me in there, yeah, because I, I was up for a serious charge. And uh, I met Sam McCarthy, little Sam McCarthy, good fighter, Sam McCarthy, good boxer, Sam McCarthy. I think it was featherweight, something like that. Champion, British champion, British and European champion, Sam McCarthy, very respected man, took very, very posh, Sam, very, very posh. You know, what I mean, you'd never believe that he was an arm robber. Never in a million years, yeah. And uh, met Mickey Green, Brian Turner, uh, Wilkinson, Jimmy Wilkinson. I don't know who Bertie Smalls is in there. I'm not quite sure. I can't really remember. But I think that Bertie Smalls had, uh, was doing a lot of damage then. Uh, that was when uh, Bertie Smalls became the first Supergrass uh, ever in, 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 in England. Well, there was a lot more after that. Loads, of, uh, loads after that. Loads. And, uh, you know, Gervais, was it Gervais, Mahoney, all that lot started to be, become supergrasses in, in, in later days because of Bertie Smalls got off of that sentence and uh, obviously it brought a lot forward. And, uh, you know, and, and, and after that, I mean, everything was uh, whatever went quiet and bits and pieces. Bertie Smalls had done lots of damage. They had a lot of money, that little firm. Uh, I think one of the banks in Wembley, they've got 260 grand. Couple of banks in Croydon and, and all around there. They was only good money. I mean, they had a they good had a good million pound. That little firm, Mickey Green was was was, was very mustard uh, in a, in that company. Uh, Dave Delaney, very very good. I mean, they had sledges, and guns, sawn off shotguns. And when they went into a bank, they went into a bank and got the money because in them days there was no big screens. There was no double screens up to the, up to the ceiling. Just a certain screen, maybe three foot high, going with a sledge, smash it over the counter, and take the money and guns, uh, so on the shotguns, and and they, and and the CID and the robbery squad in them days, uh, obviously. So there was like, so many armed robbers going. There was about what I don't know, maybe ten, twelve every week. Armed robbers going off all over the place. Everybody was doing armed robbers. I'm one of them that was doing armed robbers, as, 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 you know, and got nicked for it. And uh, and everybody was doing them. It was just going around doing our robberies. We done loads when we, we when I was a kid, you know. Um, but that's what it, it it was. But everybody, I mean, it was crazy. The robbery squads from Barnes, serious robbery squads. They was. I mean, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, 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 this is the truth. Yeah, you wouldn't believe this, right? I was coming through Barnes once um, in them in them days, coming through Barnes High Street, and uh, bought, just bought a supermarket there. And I remember these old Bill, they jumped out the fucking motor. His old Bill jumped out the motor, laughing and joking, went, yeah, go on, like, like armed robbers. Crazy. It, like, it made out that it was armed robbers. It's mad. Fucking mad, you know what I mean? And, like, like, they were worse than the actual armed robbers. I mean, they used to, don't worry about it, they used to earn a few, they used to earn, earn a few pennies. There's a few old Bill got nicked, got suspended, because there was the ones that believed to put up certain banks. But obviously, so being our builder got acquitted. Uh, that's what happened, 
you know, in, in them days. But a lot of armed robberies, mate, a lot of armed robberies used to go off every week. And, you know, people used to earn lots and lots of money and people get lots and lots of birds. I mean, there was, you know, I mean, the prisons become, started becoming full up with armed robbers. Everywhere you went, every store you went to, armed robbery, armed robbery, 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand. Everywhere, you, every cell, every cell, seriously. Every cell, Wandsworth, Scrubs, Brixton, everyone, it was full up with armed robbers, full up with armed robbers. Anyway, Jimmy was a, a, a very respectable, hard man, yeah? Uh, you didn't fuck with him, yeah? You don't fuck with people like that, yeah? People that are more dangerous with things in their hands than they are with their hands, yeah? You know, I mean, them people that you could have a row with uh, and, and shout them out, shout and scream, and uh, okay, whatever, and you know, and then come back. Come back maybe a week later, two later, and put one in you, mate. Jimmy stabbed me three times in the back with a knitting needle, yeah? With a knitting needle. And, uh, you know, over, over Cracknell, wanted to know why I was with Cracknell, and this, that, and the other. And uh, he stabbed me three times with a knitting needle in the back, pierced me three inches, mate, fucking, you know, like internal bleeding, and I was in a bit of trouble, they cut my back up, and anyway, and uh, later on, uh, he's coming through the market, and I jumped with a thing on it because he had a hammer. You know, I mean, everyone says I'm gonna bash him up with my fist, you know, but I ain't taking that chance. I ain't taking that chance, you know. I'm, I'm, I mean, he, he's already plunged me up. He might plunge me again. So anyway, that happens. He become he become more, more, more. Everybody's more frightened of him around w w all them areas, Wembley areas, Harrow area, um, Ealing, Ealing Broadway, Acton's, all around them areas. I mean, I was one of the governors of Acton. I think I was the governor of Acton uh, when I was getting growing up. I was always fought, always fighting. I was a good fighter. Uh, you know, boxing wise, but I could have a fight, you know what I mean? And, and I think I was one of the governors, or maybe the governor of Acton and Ealing, Chiswick, all in them areas. And I didn't fuck about, everybody was fighting me, and uh, and, and, and that was it. And um, when I was with um, a certain guy, Alec Jones from Paddington, listen to me, mate. Me and Alec Jones together, but everyone was fighting. Everybody was petrified of me and Alec Jones together. Me and Alec Jones was a proper little company, yeah? Uh, no one mucked about us, mate. No one, everybody was fighting me and Alec Jones. They, they see, I was with Alec Jones all the time, Alec Jones with me all the time. And we was a force, mate. We was a force, we are both fighters, back to back. Like back to back, like they couldn't be beat, mate. We couldn't be beat. And uh, later on, um, I think that me and Alec's parted for a little bit of time. I was in Kingston, I was working with a big company. I didn't need to be around Alex, and uh, they shot Alex. They shot his machine gun him up, and uh, and he ran the police car, ran the police station, and they put him in uh, Paddington, Paddy, uh, the, what is it called? Uh, the, the, the big uh, hospital in Paddington. Um, anyway, but he, that's where he was, in there, and uh, he, he was under, under under protection. I went in there to see him, because I heard about it, and uh, they had all armed police there. Uh, you know, fuck that, mate. So I just walked out of there, left it, you know. But Alan was, Alex was shot four or five times with a machine gun. And I pulled up with a, pulled up with a, a, a lamb, lamb, Lamborghini or some fucking I was heard or a car, I'm not quite sure. And let him have it. Alex knew that he was in trouble. Let me tell you something about Alex Jones, yeah. His dad was a respected man. Proper, proper man. Judo everything, karate, proper respected man. Because he was who he was, yeah? A very, very hard man, very respected man. Rest it, God rest his soul, rest in peace, uh, you know, mucka. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry about what happened, uh, Alex and your mum and all that game, and uh, my love goes to you both, and to your family and everything, yeah? But um, Alex's dad, uh, listen, taught Alex, taught Alex the rights, the right. If you ever get shot, if you ever get stabbed, this is what you do. Alex is mustard. When he got stabbed in the leg, he put his finger, thumb, right into the stab wound to stop the bleeding. When he got shot, he knew what to do. He didn't panic. He ran the police car. He knew that the only ones that could help him. Alex Jones is a proper man, a proper dangerous man, that me and him was together. Alex Jones can hold his hands up. He'd have killed 
he'd have killed Roy Shaw, he'd have killed Lenny McLean, he'd have killed most of the fighters that, that day, yeah, because I was doing it as well. But uh, honestly, he was a, this man can bang. If he, he left hand, right hand, he could bang. Me and him mucked about one day in the lift, yeah, I've got to say this because it was like, it was blinding. Me and him were mucked about one day in the lift in Paddington, going up to his house, and uh, he was shaving up in the, in, 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 in the lift. Fucking hell, it's only a short, short and, and, and I was a little bit of trouble, <laughs> a little bit of trouble, because it's a short space. And uh, he was like, but I was trying to get out of it, and I whipped him out of the side, hit him in the rib, the lower rib, bang, and he knew. He went, oh, fuck that, leave off, leave off. And, uh, but I was a lucky punch, you know what I mean? It was a lucky punch, and uh, I, I love Alex. I love Alex Jones. Uh, good man. I love anybody powerful. And he was a powerful man. I've got respect for him, mate. And he was, uh, he kept his mouth shut. He got nicked for a thing, big thing in Paddington, Church Street. The police were involved selling drugs. He was selling drugs to the police and the police women. It was all shagging each other. And, 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 and they all, the, all the police women and the men had to go rehab uh, because they were taking coke. And, and it's the wrong thing. Alec got 12 years or 10 years or whatever he got done for. He shouldn't have got that bird. The old Bill Gross, the old Bill was involved. Smoking drugs, taking crack, taking all sorts of things, and that to go rehab. Is that right? I don't know. Uh, Asian Bell, uh, what's it called? Asian Bell Vulture? I don't know if that's standard in them days, but that's what happened. Anyway, go back to um, Jimmy Wilkinson. I was to see it, as I said, I see him um, in Harrow in the club with Mickey Green, Bertie Smalls Gross, Mickey Green up on a, on a, on a big rubber. I think I was away with Mickey in, uh, in, in Chelmsford. In 76, 77, and I was there when the, when the fire burnt down in 78, uh, Mickey Green was still there. Um, uh, and and uh, Mickey Green was a, a, well, a well respected man. Never shouted about, mate, he was a quiet man, but had plenty of money. Mickey Green was a multi and I've just been told he died in Spain. He'd done a big sentence in, in America, 20 odd years in American jail. He was one of the biggest drug dealers ever. Um, old my hands like Mickey Green. Mickey, I like Mickey Green when I was in Chelsea with him. Nice man, yeah. Nice, nice man. Um, and then, um, you know, later on, um, there was a, a, a guy called Rodney. A guy called Rodney got involved with a big robbery, a big, big robbery. And uh, certain people, and uh, he had a lot of money. And uh, Jimmy's dead now. Uh, I ain't grassing him up. I'm not grassing Jimmy up. Wilkinson up, he's dead. He, there's nothing they can do. They can't dig, uh, dig him up and hang him or whatever. But um, I mean, uh, Rodney got what? Oh, oh, fucking hell! Rodney had a lot of money, and uh, and, uh, and 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 Jimmy shot him four times because he he didn't give him no money. Uh, he shot him four times in in the tummy and tried to kill him and try to shoot him in the head, and it and and, and it didn't happen. It a blank. It's not happened. Uh, I think it was an automatic and it jammed and if he had shot me he'd have been dead but he, he, he uh, Rodney was uh, uh, pronounced dead he was put into an ambulance uh, but then he come back round again they pulled all his in intestines out all his intestines out put them by the side of him uh, took them to St Mary's that's it the hospital in Paddington St Mary's took over the whole the whole uh, 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 one ward of one unit and kept him in there armed police um, I'm on about proper police. Um, uh, looked after him, armed police. They looked after him because uh, they know that um, the person that shot him was not going to muck about, mate. He's going to come back and try and kill him, but he didn't. I mean, I mean, I, I was told that it was Jimmy Wilkinson. Uh, I know he's dead now, and I'm, I'm, I, I, I shouldn't really say it, but I did say it. But he's dead. He can't come back. They can't hang him or whatever. But um, that's the sort of dangerous man that he was. He couldn't muck about him, mate. You could not muck about with Jimmy Wilkinson. You know, he was a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous man. I mean, he was one of the most dangerous men, feared man that I that I know. I was asked, uh, Marvin Herbert asked me uh, about, what, seven, eight months ago, maybe more than that, who was the most dangerous man you've, you, you've ever met by? I said, you know, I, I, the big company. There was a few people in that big company that I used to work for that I know are very, very dangerous. But the most dangerous man now, I think about it and go back to it, is uh, Jimmy Wilkinson. Jimmy Wilkinson was one of the most dangerous men I've ever known. You know, he, he, he you know, you see, you see him. That yeah, he, he had that look. Yeah, he had that look in his face uh, that if you fucked about, mate, you was in trouble. It don't matter about. It don't matter. Listen, I could bash him up all day long. 
I could bash him up my fist 24-7. He ain't going to stand a chance at that. But you can't beat that person. You can't beat that person. You bash him up, he comes back, he shoots you. You know, it's one of the things when they go, you pull a knife, you pull a gun. You know, Al Capone, is that what he said? You pull a knife, you pull a knife, I pull a gun. And that's how it is. That's how it is, and that's how it was, yeah? And uh, someone tried to fuck him, uh, and uh, he, he shot him four times, and the, f the fifth one didn't work, and uh, very lucky got powder mark on his, on his head. So he was very lucky to survive, and, um, and, and, and obviously so, Jimmy was very lucky that he never got put away for it. I think he got pulled in for it, but uh, uh, there was no there was no charge. This is only hearsay. Don't forget, this is only hearsay about uh, Jimmy shot him uh, four times and the fifth one nearly nearly, nearly uh, just a blank. But um, you know it was hearsay, and I believe the hearsay to be the truth. Uh, everyone was saying it. Everyone was talking about it. Um, I think he got pulled in for it, Jimmy. I'm not quite sure, but as a nice, 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 dangerous, dangerous man. When he had a drink, Jimmy, I mean, I was just, as I say, when I was a kid, when I was to meet him in the 60s, early 70s, 70s, round about in that time, down at Harrow uh, in, in Mickey Green's club, uh, I was going there with uh, a, a guy called Danny Williams, my mate Danny from Acton, me and him now fell out, Danny's got a big club in uh, Spain, I heard him the other day singing My Way, <laughs> he's like, my singing My Way, I can't believe it, hey, Danny, grow up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he's a lad, Danny Williams, isn't he? Singing my way on, uh, on in his club. Um, uh, I mean, come on, Dan, come on, mate. Anyway, me and Danny fell out. Um, he's got brothers, Arthur, John, Tony. The best one out of the lot of them now, I believe, is Tony Williams. I like Tony very, very much. Me and Tony used to box together. Um, me and him do. We done a couple of films when we was kid. Me and Tony in a boxing ring. Uh, I, I, I mean, every time you try to find things, you can never find things. You look for me, look for me, you can't find them. Ask people, they can't find them, you know what I mean? But um, as I said, I had that big thing in Acton Town Hall, two big fights in Acton Town Hall, my own promotions. Um, I've got a bit I showed you on, on, on my podcast. I'm now trying to get the, the photographs, the pictures, so I can put them on my podcast too. I've also told you, I shouldn't really be doing this because what I'm doing, I'm doing a book, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to work out um, what how, how it's going to go about. Um, I've got a ghostwriter, uh, also got a publisher, but um, I obviously so like everything, I'd like a bit of money up front because uh, I'm going to give my st my story. I'll give my story on YouTube. YouTube ain't giving nothing, but that's YouTube. Uh, but this is how I've got no this is how I got noticed for YouTube. When people go on YouTube, they get noticed by other people. Um, I want to do a book. I want to do a book. I want to maybe do two books, you know. I mean, they're going to be bestsellers. Listen, Dave Courtney can do a book and become bestseller, and 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 uh, and our, our, our Maka, our other Maka can do a book and, uh, you know, and, and uh, become bestsellers. I mean, come on, it's like, come on, uh, Lenny McLean done, done a book, become a bestseller, you know what I mean? Lenny McLean's, okay, he's, he's a street fighter, He's a fighter, but yes, no one's done what I've done. No one's done what I've done. No one's been in prison for the amount of time I've been in prison. No one's done the people I know. Dave Courtney, all them people with no one. No one. Not Marvin, no one. No one's done what I've done. No one. You know, like, it's, it, it, no one has done it. I'm old school. I'm under the old school, mate, the old firm left. Do you know what I mean? Well, how I don't know, but I am. And, um, you know, and it's like, no one's done what I've done. Believe me, mate, no one's done what I've done. The people I know, everything. No one. And why should I know what a book? It's going to be a bestseller. Believe me, it'll be a bestseller. You know what I mean? I mean, and, and I want to get the right publishers, and I want to get the right persons who write my book. I've seen two people. Uh, they're very good, but but I want some money up front. You know, I'm not, I mean, I've got to survive. I've got to live. I can't live with nothing. I'm going there to, to give them my story. I want something in my pocket, you know what I mean? I ain't doing no villainy no more, I ain't doing nothing. I'm with the best guy that anybody could ever be with, my mate Terry. He looks after me, but I don't want to punch on my mate Terry. My, he's my mate. He's my mate. He's looked after me enough, yeah? I don't want to punch on him. He's the greatest guy you could ever meet. He's the nicest guy you could ever meet. He talks exactly like my, I do. He talks exactly like most gangsters do, you know what I mean? He ain't a gangster, but he's been a naughty boy in his life. 
but he's pulled himself through it and he's got a big company and I love him mate he works really really hard he works seven days a week 24 7 and uh, that's it and you know and, it, and he's the one who stood behind me you know and he's uh, all his boys I mean Lion that's it I've got Lion I've got Jade I mean I don't know the other daughter I don't know the other girls um, I've got Sammy uh, the young the youngest uh, nice boy mate he's one of the managers of the yard you've got Danny he's the manager of the yard Danny, that's uh, uh, that's the partner of uh, Terry. Danny's a, a nice, nice, nice guy. A nice guy. You can always have a good conversation with Danny. He ain't he he, he ain't um, shy of talking to you. And you know, most people don't want to talk to per a person like myself, possibly a gangster or whatever. No one wants to talk to people like me. You know what I mean? But Danny, I respect Danny very, very much. The old man, I love the old man. I love uh, the old man Terry. I love him a lot. Yeah, he's my friend. My best friend at the time. Now, um, you know, I mean, I've got my best friends Alex and all that game and uh, Jamie Bennett. I mean, Jamie Bennett's been with me through thin, 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 thick and thin. Jamie knows more about me than I know. You know, Jamie Bennett from Brentford, nice, nice guy, big family, all brothers, seven brothers, eight brothers. They start to give a mate because all the roost, but they seem to be on up their own little things. Uh, Jamie Bennett was in um, was in the craze. Uh, with his brother, there was the two twins. Everyone would see him in the playground, basically people about them two kids was Jamie Bennett and uh, and his brother, you know, and um, you know, and, and and both of them, both of them should have gone on in their life. Both of them should have should have uh, 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 gone more active, done more acting. Both good looking boys, really, you know, really, you know, and uh, Jason. Jason, he's a, he's a grafter, he works, uh, Jamie don't work, he's a lover, he's a lover, and he's well gifted, Jamie, uh, so he's, uh, he uses that as a weapon, and he gets he gets everything he wants, yeah, well, I don't blame him, you know what I mean, I don't blame him, I love Jamie Bennett very, very much, he stuck together with me through thin, thick and thin, we're, we're good friends, and uh, I, I wish him all the best, mate, everybody knows Jamie Bennett in Brentford, and, uh, he, he, you know, he's a nice kid, he's a very nice kid, yeah. But I go back to Jimmy Wilkinson. I mean, me and Jimmy, I last met Jimmy, um, I think, well, I don't know, late 70s. Late 70s, I think it was. Um, and, and I was I was in Ealing. I was in Ealing. I was, I had lots of money then. Uh, I was shopping with my with, with my girl, Danny, uh, Danny Johnson. Um, he's got my child, my, my, my boy, that Sonny, and my, my, my little girl, Ruby Ray, that I've not seen not seen for fucking so many years but i love my ruby way i'd love to see her my sonny i see him one day he's a good boy he wants to bash his dad up he's a, a big rugby player he's not in our stone <laughs> he said to me on the phone that uh, he's gonna come and bash me up fair play with him fair play with him oh uh, you know but uh, he's my son so i won't be hitting my son so if he hits me at night and i was not not my off. <laughs> He's a rugby player. He plays. He plays for Australia. I love him to death. He spoke to me the other day. I couldn't believe it when I spoke to me. He really talks Australian. Uh, he wanted to FaceTime me or whatever they call face thing me, but I couldn't get it on my phone. But if he's listening to me, do it again. I want to see you. Uh, I love him to death. Uh, I love my other kids to death. Uh, my other kids, Jay, and my daughters, Jamie, and uh, little little Bieber. Uh, you know, um, at the minute uh, they've gone crazy on this um, on this virus turnout. Uh, they've got generators, they've got food. That everyone's waiting for it to kick off, so uh, they got to get on with it. And I hope they get on with it, mate. Um, you know, um, I ain't had the jab. I don't want the jab. I'm not having it. I'm not having a jab. Yeah, you know, I had the flu jab uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was really, really bad. I felt really bad. I don't think I'll get over it. Whether or not it was the flu jab, I don't know. But they give me something. I didn't like it. You know. It pulled me down a little bit. My shoulder, my, 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 my left hand shoulder is fucking painful. It's over that. That was two or three weeks ago giving me this. And my shoulder's really aching, you know what I mean? So I don't know what it was they give me, but um, I hope it wasn't anything bad, yeah? Because, you know, it's about they're trying to fucking nut us all off or whatever they're trying to do with us. I don't know, yeah? Uh, so look, um, as I say, I'm going to do this book. I'm going to do this book, and it's going to be the bestseller. Believe me, it's going to be the bestseller. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Maybe just Rael. You know, maybe just Rael. Think at the back, nice. Think at the back of it. Um, but um, it's going to be good. Um, I've got big, big stories. I was going to do a big story the other day with uh, with Sean Atworth.
but I can't go too far on his stories because I just say I'm doing a book, I don't want to spoil it all, yeah? I don't want to spoil things, I shouldn't really done this today, but um, I've done this for uh, one of Wilkins' uh, uh, nephews. Uh, he's asking me to do something about his, his granddad or, his, his, or whatever it is, uh, or his uncle. And, and I have done, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I, and and I just, um, you know, Jimmy Jimmy Wilkinson was a very very powerful man, very very hard man, and very dangerous man. Uh, most people in Ealing, Axon, Chiswick, all around them areas uh, respected and were frightened of him. Certain people wasn't. Most of the people in the food market wasn't frightened of him because they're proper people. You know what I mean, I was frightened at first. You know what I mean? But after a while, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I was just seeing him in the clubs. I mean, Mickey Green, I mean, th that name, Mickey Green, you know what I mean? Brian Turner, Dave Delaney. I mean, there was a lot of people. Uh, I mean, I met, well, do you know a guy I met in in uh, in um, Chelmsford that I like? Gentry, Billy Gentry, nice fella, mate. Nice fella. I met some nice people in prison, you know that. I met some really, really nice people, good names. It's going to be in my book, all the names I've met, all the people I've met. I met people in there, mate, that, uh, that that become very, very dangerous people, the most dangerous people in London. Uh, I've met them in prison, and I, I, and I was train, my, train with one of them, and uh, he was a nice geezer. He was a nice geezer. I know me and him fell out, but he was a nice, nice guy. Loved him a lot, mate, and uh, he gave me a lot. He gave me lots of things in, in prison. He looked after me in a way. Um, but uh, there was a load in prison that, uh, that, that that's going to come out in my in my book, yeah? Anyway, this is Ray Bang Bang Hill, or Bang Bang Ray Hill. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and, uh, you know, and please, my, my, my books. Now, I still, I'll still do a little podcast now and again, maybe every other day or whatever. But I won't go too strong on my stories. I'd like to save it for my book, you know. Um, please give me comments on that. What do you feel about it? I've got more confidence since I've been doing this podcast. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, what I'd like to be able to do is uh, maybe talk to maybe talk to kids, boys, men about what what can happen in your life, you know, doing this and doing that. You know, but, I mean, it's not a good thing, but it is a good thing. Let's put it this way: when I was doing our hobbies. And Robbie's, I was getting lots of money. I lived my life, I had a good life. I was working for a big company. I had a good life, yeah? I had everything I've ever wanted, you know what I mean? So I've lived my life. I've had a good time, you know? Now I'm going through the, the, the bad times. But me doing all the bad things in my life, all the bad things in my life, and it, it's now, you know, now it's my time to get all these bad things out in writing to let people see what I've gone through in my life and to let people see what happens in the end of it. Because it happens in the end of it. Come into a one bedroom flat, no money, nothing. Lose your family, you lose your wives, your wives. You know, lose all that. And, you know, but I've got something better than that at the minute. And, um, you know, um, and, 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 and I'm going to marry this person big time. I mean, you know, I ain't going to muck about. And, 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 I want to get on my life, enjoy my life, yeah? Uh, what's left of it. And uh, and that's it, really. Anyway, please like and subscribe. And uh, later. Take care. Nice one.